Hi everybody, Josh Byerly here inside Mission Control Houston. I'm joined by Rose Flores, who is the Orion Crew and Service Module Chief Engineer. Let's talk about Orion for a little bit. We've got sure. EFT-1, which is Exploration Flight Test Number 1, coming up next year in 2014. A big day right now because the heat shield just arrived at the Kennedy Space Center last night and is being unpacked today, right? It is, it certainly is. Um, it came in from Boston yeah. and flew on the guppy and landed uh, yesterday evening. So how exciting is it to actually see real hard? We're seeing it getting packed right here, I guess, uh, before. That's a big box. That is a big heat shield. Talk about the size of it a little bit. It is a very large heat shield. You know, we've spent a lot of time developing it and testing it and transporting it. Um, really, the guppy kind of made sense because it's as large as it is. So let's talk about the, you know, we talk about it as the biggest, it's the biggest one ever built, right? Now, why is it, well, first of all, why does it have to be so big? And second of all, why do we have to do so much testing? We're seeing the, the uh, you know, the actual engineering process of building it here now, but, you know, people look back and go, okay, you did heat shields back in Apollo. You know, it, why does it take so much to build a new one? Like, talk about the technology that goes into it. Well, so for, for the crew and service module, this one is a lot larger than our Apollo. Yeah. capsule. So that drives the size of the heat shield. Um, for EFT-1 specifically, this particular heat shield is designed for the mission that we're doing. Mm -hmm. So for later missions, it'll, you know, the size of the heat shield will change, at least the, al the ablative surface will. Yeah. Um, but, um, but the technology itself, we actually ended up using the same manufacturer for the Avcoat material as we did for the Apollo. Um, for the Apollo vehicle. So is it closer to the Apollo kind of, without getting too technical, sort of Apollo composition versus what the space shuttle, you know, the space shuttle had those famous tiles yes. on the bottom, so it's more... It is, it is more Apollo-like. Um, the structure it's ablative, itself, right? yes, it it's ablative. Out. So yeah. the, the structure itself, um, the, the structure is a metallic structure mm -hmm. um, with a composite laminate over it. And then we've got the uh, honeycomb that you can kind of see a little bit in the in the video that you're playing right now. Yeah, you can see it. Um, you see a little diamond honey honeycomb, and we actually place the, the av coat inside that honeycomb surface. So that is essentially what burns off as we re-enter, whereas the structure itself, it's titanium, it's a titanium skeleton with a composite laminate structure over it. Yeah. Um, and then we've got the honeycomb and uh, filled in with the ablative. Material. So let's talk about EFT-1. The purpose is to basically send this out several thousand miles out into space and then bring it back in at a speed and velocity that sort of mimics what you would see at either a lunar return or, or one from deep space, right? There's, there's sort of the mock-up of what it right, would Right, so like. it's, a, it's a high altitude um, re-entry profile that we're running. So it's a high energy re-entry profile. And essentially we're trying to get at some of the heat rates and heat loads that we would have um, for, a, for a high energy entry. Because it is different coming back. It you know, is different coming back from, orbit. that's right, it's a, it's a different approach, and uh, what we're expecting to see on this flight is, you know, try to capture data that's going to help us evaluate and design um, the next heat shield that we use for each, for each additional mission. Yeah. So, it's really gathering additional data that's going to help us um, better design the yeah. next version of this heat shield. Talk about your personal experience. I mean, you, you know, you, you worked on sh shuttle for a while, and then, and then you're doing this. You know, how different is it to work on a brand new program? that, you know, we've been talking about Orion for a while, you know, for a number of years, it was, you know, part of Constellation, now it's part of, now we call it the multi-purpose crew module. Um, you, you know, is it awesome to finally see this stuff becoming real, that, you know, real pieces of hardware are being built and down there at the Kennedy Space Center, and we're, and we're you know, almost a year out, less than a year out from actually flying now. It is, it's, um, it's completely different, actually, because I was not around when we did the dvt and &E of, of the space shuttle. The actual design. So, yeah, shuttle, so yeah. I came on board for, I think it was STS-26, was right. my first shuttle mission. So coming into Orion as we're designing the vehicle, and then seeing it go from paper to actual development units on into building the actual flight structure, yeah. you know, it's, it's very rewarding. Um, yeah, activity I, be able to participate in. Uh, that was kind of my reaction to when Orion, you know, we've seen so many mock-ups here at JSC and some of the other places, and, and the first time I saw a piece of real hardware of Orion, back when I was working on that, you know, that particular program, it was like, God, this is real. I mean, this is real stuff that's actually going to fly in space. You, you kind of get that sort of geeky, cool vibe back, you know, whenever mm -hmm. you see it for the first time. You know, in Orion, it, it has so many, it, it's so compact, whereas yeah. the shuttle was as large as it was. Yeah, You've so got all these mechanisms and structural pieces, but it's very large, um, whereas Orion is very compact. So you've got numerous mechanisms and subsystems in a very small area, even though it's a large vehicle. Yeah. Um, 
crew module. So. So does it seem real now that the flight's about a year about? It does year seem out? real. It does <laughs> seem real to see it coming together out in the ONC and and each piece, each thruster that gets installed, each parachute that gets installed, and now with the heat shield coming in, that was it. That's a major major milestone for us to have the heat shield to d deliver to the ONC yeah. and and get that ready to be attached to our our crew module primary structure. Well, last question, you know, what, what's next now that the heat shield's down there at the Kennedy Space Center, now that it's going to be unloaded this morning, what, what's the next step? So the next step is heat shield will come in, um, they'll start installing some of the additional instrumentation that we need. Um, from an Orion perspective itself, um, we'll be doing some static loads testing on our service module, we'll continue to install our parachutes, um, continue to install all the components that we've got on the vehicle. Okay. Rose, Rose Flores, thank you very much for joining us. We look forward to yeah, it. It's going to be a cool flight next year. Uh, when we take a look at this EFT-1, it's, it's going to be pretty dramatic. If you want to follow along with the development of Orion or take a look at uh, what's ahead for EFT-1, just log on to nasa.gov slash Orion. You can see all the different pictures and uh, follow along there. So thanks again. Thanks, Josh.